In today's gospel, we have an incredible imagery of Jesus being baptized as he rises out of the water. Suddenly, the heavens open, and the Spirit of God descends like a dove and enters him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, with whom I am well pleased. Wow. Imagine the excitement of the moment. Imagine yourself standing at the water's edge and being present and witnessing Jesus being baptized and the Spirit of God announcing him as the Chosen One. I can almost feel it like I was there. Isn't that the gospel message today? That we have life through faith in surrendering to Jesus. God shows no partiality. God calls all of us, whoever we are, wherever we are, to the waters of baptism, to new life in him, daily and hourly. Today in the church calendar, we celebrate the baptism of our Lord, We've just finished the beautiful season of Christmas and have celebrated the birth of our Lord. And now we are transported to Jesus' baptism. The little baby in the manger is all grown up and is now being baptized, bearing witness to humility, surrender, and servanthood. Jesus, in a way, I guess we could say, He's being announced, right? His baptism is a sign to the world of his life's mission and his priesthood as a savior to the world, redeemer and healer to all of us. I think the gospel message is in the example of Jesus' surrender. And I think the question we are left with is how do we follow in his footsteps? of the model of surrender and servitude? How can we live that example of hope and love wherever we are at or with whoever we meet? I can almost hear John standing with Jesus in the River Jordan saying, Listen, you've got to be kidding me. I've been waiting here and wearing camel's hair and eating this recipe of honey, and you're asking me to baptize you? No, no, no. What don't you get, Savior? You're supposed to baptize me, remember? I wonder how many times in our lives we have said this metaphorically to Jesus ourselves. Lord, aren't you supposed to be doing this for me? Jesus is showing us how to surrender. And surrender doesn't mean giving up. It means letting go of all that stuff we carry with us each day on our backs. You know, the weight we carry. That weight of failure, the weight of fear and defeat, and so much more. That weight that drags us down, that says you won't succeed, and you've already failed, so you can't do that. I've got news for you. When these words of desperation and hopelessness float past your mind, remember this. Just let them keep on floating by. Jesus lived and died for us. He surrendered and invites us to do the same. Surrender and being a servant are hard words for us to digest these days, aren't they? If we look at our social history with those words, and especially given our present-day political climate and what seems to be happening in the world around us, it's hard to imagine that this concept was ever presented as a loving and hopeful way of life, isn't it? After all, working for justice and freedom for all and caring for the least of us puts others' 
needs before our own doesn't seem to be too high on the list of priorities these days, does it? But how then do we bear witness to Jesus and his love? In our lesson from Isaiah, the prophet brings the message of hope to not only the broken children of Israel, but to all of us. If you recall the story of Israel, how God delivered his people from bondage in Egypt, made a covenant with them, and brought them through the wilderness to the land of Canaan. And then God promises them that their bondage to the Babylonians will soon end. And God will restore them to the rightful place as God's people. God will not abandon them. And God is a mighty deliverer. On this journey, how many times has God called us to the surrender, to his love? And we found in the middle of all that, somehow, what we thought impossible or lost was healed. In our lesson from the prophet Isaiah, he reminds the people who God and is and how God works, which in my opinion must have been a pretty hard-to-do thing during the current times. He reminds them that God is the God not of Israel only or even Babylon, but the one who created the heavens and stretched out the earth the God of creation who made everything that is. This is the God who gives breath and life to all people upon the earth and spirit to those who walk in it, giving real life to every living, breathing thing on the planet. The prophet Isaiah cries out with hope by saying God will send a spirit-filled servant who will bring justice to all people everywhere. He will not grow faint. He will not be crushed. And people all over will wait for his teaching. God calls them to righteousness, not for themselves alone, but for the nation. The prophet reminds them that God has not abandoned them, but is indeed at work among them as God's people. And this purpose extends beyond themselves to all the earth. This prophetic message has a dual meaning for God's people in bondage and all people. It's like a mirror shining back at them and us. A reflection of God telling them and us we are supposed to be the image, the reflection, if you will, of God's love, the Savior's love to the world. Does this message sound familiar to us? Can you hear an echo for us in the gospel message of today? In the book of Acts, The Apostle Peter is exuberantly witnessing salvation through Jesus Christ for all. He begins to tell the story which he witnessed firsthand after eating and drinking with Jesus and the band of regular folks like us of how Jesus commissioned them to preach and testify that salvation is for all who will do what is right, surrender and believe and live that witness of Jesus' love. Peter's life was a witness of our Lord's life. His call, his ministry, his walk to the cross, his surrender, his rise from the dead, his message of forgiveness and hope, his message of life eternal through him, and faith and surrender. For a moment, I ask you to journey back with me to your first encounters with God, to your early stages in your triumphs 
your failures and your successes, your moments of sadness and joy, and your first moments where you knew God was real to you. As a child, I was born in the 60s. I struggled to find my place. I grew up near the Canadian border in upstate New York, and when I was about 13 years old, I was extremely introverted. I would say so much so, I, wouldn't do any, I would do anything to get away from the crowd, and I felt desperate and lost most of the time. I never felt like I fit in, and I started to question God of what life was all about and if I would ever belong. My science teacher, Mr. Bray, always opened his science room for the kids that wanted a quiet place to study or read during free time and when he didn't have class. One day in Mr. Bray's room, I found a book on the table and that talks about the history of the Bible, facts, and prophecy. I met with another student who told me he and a bunch of kids would gather at Mr. Bray's and his wife's home for what they called open talk and fact-finding about God and singing. It's here where I was found by God. One night as we gathered and we sang about God, the tears streamed down my face, and it was as, as if God was holding me. And that night on my way home, I talked with God for the first time. I knew I wasn't alone anymore. I felt as if a thousand pounds had been lifted off my shoulders. My life was changed forever. I surrendered that night. Jesus is calling us daily to a life of surrender and faith in him, which springs forth hope, love, and the courage to serve as Christ's own. By renewing our baptism, baptism comes, becomes a living sacrament, much like the covenant of marriage. When two people get married, they exchange their vows before God and they spend the rest of their lives living out that promise they've made to each other. Let us stand and renew our baptismal covenant, our vows with God and one another. Do we believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and ascended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge us, the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers. I will, God help. will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, God help. will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, God help. will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, God help. 
Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen.